Hi guys, this video was filmed in February before COVID-19 was a pandemic. Please know that we are not currently traveling and are self-isolating. Now on to the video. are just south of Lake Havasu City and we've stopped at Cattail Cove State Park to dump our tanks and refill fresh. But while we're in here, we're just gonna ask if by chance they might have a spot available for us to camp. It's a Saturday, busy time of year, so chances are extremely unlikely, but let's see if we get lucky. Okay, so as expected, they did not have any more of their regular camping sites available, but for $20 a night, you can dry camp in their overflow parking area. We were going to pay $15 anyways to dump and refill our water here, so we figured it was worth the extra $5 just to spend the night here. Also, that gives us the opportunity to drive around with just the van and uh, scout out the various uh, boondocking areas around here. Yeah, so we're gonna drive out now, take a look and find the best one and figure out where we wanna move in the next couple of days. Yep. Well, our public land scouting yesterday did not go too well. No, nope, not that there wasn't plenty of it. There just wasn't any that we found that appealing. Right, exactly. It was either crowded or not very pretty. So anyways, we decided just to come back to the state park and spend another night in the overflow parking. Um, but this is a nice state park. It's right on the Colorado River. Uh, there's hiking trails and a dog beach. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll be exploring those things today and continue continuing to try to figure out where to stay in Lake Havasu City. Yeah, there's a couple more BLM or uh, trust land places we can check out and uh, hopefully one of those will, will fit our high standards. <laughs> state park today and on to some BLM land in the area. It's been a really nice state park but they just haven't had availability for the campground and it doesn't make sense to us to pay $20 a night to dry camp when we can do it for free less than a mile up the road. Um, but we got our money's worth out of this place. I took a very long unlimited hot water shower this morning which was worth every bit of the $20 a night. What do you think? Takes forever to fill up the water tank. <laughs> it does. Agreed. Ready to go. Well, this is where we landed. It's called the Steps, and it's kind of neat because it's a whole nother form of camping out in the West. So instead of being BLM land or National Forest land, it's actually Arizona State Trust land. For $20 permit for the year, you can camp on any Arizona State Trust land, and I think they have a 14-day limit um, like most BLM spots do. Uh, this particular spot is about actually 20 miles south of Lake Havasu City, and we chose this spot on purpose 
because we're here for the annual Winter Blast, which is a massive fireworks show that they hold in Lake Havasu City every year. Uh, so that's what we're here for, but unfortunately one of our dogs, Madly, has pretty severe fireworks anxiety. So we knew we wanted to be camped kind of far away from the action, uh, and then we'll just drive into town to check out the blast. So that's actually where we're headed now. We're headed over here to the rodeo grounds in Lake Havasu to check out the pyrotechnic show. Yeah, this is uh, where they hold them. And actually, so the show officially starts at 7.30. So we got here at 6, thinking that would be plenty of time to get into the grandstand. Not, not so much. It not, was, not it was full already. Yeah, um, but thankfully we know some people that are camped here in this park. It's called Sarah Park here. They saw us wandering aimlessly in the parking lot <laughs> below and texted us and said, hey, come on up here. We got a great spot. So yes. it, it all worked out perfect. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Yep. Um, so the pyrotechnic show is kind of unique in that it's not really, how do you describe what's going on here? So we're told it's kind of the display for municipalities, Disney World, places like that that put on their own fireworks shows and this is kind of the latest and greatest in fireworks industry. Yeah, so the makers of the fireworks are putting on a show for the buyers, but it's open to the public to come view. So yeah, they're showing off their latest and greatest and then we get to be the recipients of, of that. So yeah. um, kind of a interesting uh, thing, but it should be cool to watch. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. last night. We didn't wrap it up last night because it was dark and filming in the dark doesn't really work very well. I guess it's important for you to know that if you're considering coming to Lake Havasu City for the show, that it's different than most other fireworks shows. It's not your typical, you sit there for an hour and it's constant fireworks. It's, they launch a set and then there's a kind like, of a long pause in between and then they'll launch another set and then there's another long pause. And this can go on for a while, but there's a lot of waiting around in between. Which as a spectator, doesn't make it as exciting as your typical fireworks show for me anyway. What might take an hour in total if it was all at one time is instead drawn out, you know, between several hours. So we didn't get a chance to get into the grandstand because it fills up so quickly. So we don't know what that experience is like and what there might be to do in those bowls. But I can say if you have the opportunity to camp there, then you at least you have company and, you know, maybe a campfire going and, and just, you know, you can kind of have, have fun in the bowls. Yeah, exactly. All in all, some of the fireworks we saw, we were like, meh. But there were some that were like mind-blowingly huge. Some truly amazing fireworks for sure. Yeah, so definitely. And, and this should be said that this is a four-day event. Uh, we we got here for the beginning of it. And the first two nights for us were really kind right. of boring, honestly. There wasn't a whole lot going on. There wasn't even that many fireworks. This year it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Thursday, Friday, 
was we're questioning why we came. <laughs> we really were. Um, but last night, Saturday, was worth it. It was. Yeah, Saturday night was definitely a major night to go. Yes. So if you're planning on coming and you see the show maybe Thursday or Friday night and think, well, what is all the fuss about? That was the same reaction we had. And Saturday night, we were like, oh yeah, this is pretty impressive. If you have the ability to be camped near it, that would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You don't have to drive in and out, flight traffic and all that kind of stuff. So. And there's, if you can't get into the fairgrounds campground, there's BLM a immediately across the street <laughs> and it is jam-packed full of people yeah. so it filled up pretty quick too so yeah you'll, you'll want to get here early to get the best spot so i mean you could technically be just sitting at your campsite watching the show i think uh, i think it was a lot of fun and I'm, I'm glad that we made a point to come here specifically in time for the winter blast show yeah uh, but today we're headed back into Lake Havasu City uh, with the intentions of just exploring the city and the downtown area and the various touristy things there are to do. come down to the London Bridge area of Lake Havasu and we're right on, I don't know what waterway this is that we're it's next to. It's actually the Bridgewater Channel. We just passed a sign that said okay. what it was. <laughs> so the Bridgewater Channel. So what they've done is um, cut out this little channel in the lake and they put the London Bridge over it and it's become like a hot spot where people um, do water activities, so like the flashier and faster the boat, the better. <laughs> <laughs> really then, loud power boats. Yeah. A lot of pontoon boats, and they're just kind of cruising this, kind of like the old cruising the street deal. They're just right. cruising up and down this little waterway here, and they can pull over, and there's a walkway here, bathrooms and little parks and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. So you can, if you don't have a way to get on the water, you can still enjoy this area by walking the trail that runs along either side of the channel or you can actually get right down to the water's edge and play in the water um, and there's a park here with picnic tables there's a dog park it's just a really great fun area really nice area yeah. So one of the big draws to Lake Havasu is what you see behind us here. This is the London Bridge. It was built in 1830 and originally spanned the Thames River in London. It was purchased by a man named Robert McCullough from the city of London and moved here to America uh, for this pre-planned community of Lake Havasu City. Uh, so they actually took it apart brick by brick. They numbered every brick and there's a concrete structure, you know, a concrete bridge and then the, the stones that were placed on there are just kind of veneers. Um, but it's such an amazing story <laughs> that somebody bought. I mean, it's a big bridge. It's 930 it's... feet long. Right. Who buys a bridge from London right. and brings it over to America and reconstructs it? It's just really interesting, unique, and certainly a big draw to this area.
All right, we are leaving Lake Havasu today. Yeah, and we're leaving Arizona today. That's right. Yeah, we've been in the kind of the southwestern part of Arizona for the past, I don't know, it's been almost, it's been over yeah, two months. A few months, yeah. Arizona is a really cool state. We've only in our time here seen such a small part of it, but it's such a diverse state. There's so many different cool areas that are very different very different from one another. So in the past, we have visited Sedona and the Grand Canyon. We've actually flown into to Phoenix when it was 80 degrees and driven up to Flagstaff where it was snowing. <laughs> yeah. Mean, you, you get that kind of difference in, in elevations and, and climates and, and, and just the, the topography. Look, right, yeah. exactly. It's amazing. Just that few hour drive from Phoenix to Flagstaff. We went through all these different topographies um, and you know you go from deserts with saguaro cactus to mountains to Sedona with all the red rocks and the Grand Canyon which of course is incredible. Um, but this winter we were just trying to stay warm um, and so you know the southwest was part of the state was perfect for that and there has been ample uh, cheap or free camping. Uh, there's been a ton of free camping which saved us a lot of money this winter and, mm -hmm. and we're loving that fact of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it is time to move on. We do hope to come back to Arizona to explore the Sedona and Flagstaff and all the other areas uh, in the trailer where we can spend more time there than we did when we were on vacation in the past. Uh, but for now we are headed to a new state. Uh, so we hope you guys have enjoyed our time in Arizona. If you've enjoyed this video please be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you want to keep following along Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.